Well, my name is Olga. I'm going to talk about the pi squared IPM, which is a mechanism for low latency, low loss, and scalable throughput. And uh, some of the co-authors of this talk are present today, and Bob has an earlier presentation about TCP frog uh, in a different track, but which you might have attended. So um, I'm going to start with the motivation for this work. Uh, and the motivation is that low latency is a critical factor for many, if not most, applications today. Uh, so, it was uh, common to believe not so long time ago that interactive applications such as finance apps, online gaming, uh, remote desktop applications, are uh, th that they require low latency, but also low bandwidth, because such applications often use compression to reduce the amount of traffic that is sent. Uh, but with the latest advances in graphics uh, for the same applications and uh, the increased popularity of um, video streaming, uh, virtual reality applications, uh, we can say now that interactive low latency applications are, um, require not only low latency but also high throughput. And uh, for while it was believed that uh, low latency and high throughput are not achievable at the same time. So latency is a very complex problem that needs to be addressed at both end systems and in the network. And uh, why, one reason why it was believed that low latency cannot be achieved with uh, uh, high throughput is because Classic TCP requires large queues to keep the link utilization high. Uh, so you can see here that the capacity seeking sorties, uh, they need some buffer to keep the link ut utilization uh, high. And if we have a network bottleneck with tail drop and no acquiem, this uh, becomes quite bad. So we have bloated buffers and uh, quite bad performance. And if we use uh, AQM, uh, it gets better. And uh, then uh, we still have some buffering, but uh, the, to, to keep the link utilization high, but the delay is still large. So the trick is to use the scalable congestion control with finer saw teeth. And you can refer to Bob's previous talk about the details uh, on that. So the scalable congestion control uh, would uh, achieve low uh, latency, but the problem is it's too aggressive to, use, to be used on the public internet. Uh, so it cannot be deployed because it will not be able to coexist with classic congestion controls. And uh, I would like to give you a small preview of uh, the results that we have achieved with 12 pi squared. Uh, and uh, on this plot, you can see the result for the same experiment that we did three times for each of the AQMs. And if you pay attention to the first plot, uh, you can see that uh, alpha-s uh, traffic, with, which is uses scalable congestion control, uh, achieves very low queuing delay with dual pi squared, so it's near zero for 50% of the packets, and it's less than one millisecond for 90% of the packets. So those results uh, are quite impressive, and uh, I'll get back to a bit more detailed evaluation later. So uh, to summarize the main goals that we have with dual pi squared RQM, uh, we can simplify down to two points. Uh, the first point is isolation of alpha s traffic uh, from classic traffic. And the second goal is to make the coexistence of those two types of traffic <coughs> possible. So to solve the first goal, the first problem, we use two different queues. 
and each one of them has both native and couple taken. And then to make the coexistence between these two type of traffic possible, we apply different signal intensity for each types of the traffic. So we use a uh, higher signal intensity for more aggressive traffic and lower uh, signal intensity for the other traffic. And this figure again shows in a more simplified form how the AQM works. We have two types of traffic and uh, we use the ECN cl classifier to decide which queue each type of traffic is placed into. And then each of the queues has both native IQM that ensures that uh, each queue gets scheduled even if there is no traffic in the other queue. And then we have a couple IQM which applies higher signal probability for L4S queue, <coughs> which is more aggressive and uh, the, tra the traffic is more aggressive and then we have lower uh, probability for the classic queue. And just to show you um, how it works uh, in real time, I'm going to show uh, a small demo. And I hope this works because I'm going to do that this remotely. Uh, and of course, if it, yeah. so the uh, internet, the, the Wi-Fi is not that fast here. So <laughs> I hope uh, you can be patient with this. Can can I get? Uh, So to, to see the results of uh, the dual pi squared performance compared to other AQMs, we created a small uh, graphical interface. Uh, this one is running now in the taskbed where we have two senders and two receivers and an AQM node in between. Uh, so on each of the sender and receiver pairs, we can use different congestion controls. So this is first sender and receiver pair, and there's a second, and the first one is using now DCTCP, the other one is using cubic, and we have dual pi squared now set on the AQM node. So here I can start now uh, some greedy flows, um, which are just simulated by a, a client that we use that sends traffic from sender to receiver. And here you can see the rate for each of the flows. And for uh, the two types of traffic, we focus on window fairness and not rate fairness. So I'm going to switch it into window mode. So now it shows the fair window, which we calculate based on the link speed and uh, the total number of flows. And now you can see the proportion of the fair window which is close to 100%, or so close to one. Um, so you can see that each flow gets a rather fair share of the uh, link. And at the same time, we have near zero latency for the alpha rest queue. So that, uh, that part shows the queue and delay. And this is queue and delay for the alpha rest traffic, and this is the queue and delay for the uh, classic traffic. So you can uh, see the average current delay and the 99th percentile. So the 99th percentile is almost uh, at one millisecond and the average is below one millisecond, so close to zero. Now we can switch between different AQMs. So we can set uh, pi, for example. Uh, now pi is not meant to work with DCTCP, so I can switch to cubic ECN on the first um, uh, server and client pair. And uh, now you can compare the queue and delay, which is now at uh, roughly 20 millisecond, which milliseconds for both types of traffic, which is the target for Pi. Uh, and uh, we can also try with uh, FQ Codul. That's again, same setup, just that I <coughs> changed the uh, AQM uh, that is uh, uh, set on the AQM node. Now the queue and delay is at roughly 
seven milliseconds on average, and the 99th percentile is at 10 milliseconds. Uh, I can also start some uh, short flows to see the completion times. Uh, so here uh, we can, can set to 100 requests per second on average. And uh, now I can switch back to Pi, so you can, can see the difference. It get, the completion times become a bit larger. And now if I, if I switch back to dual pi squared with DC TCP, now you can see the Q and delay has switched back to near zero, and the completion times are also uh, getting smaller. It's probably a little bit hard to see, but I'm, I can clear that, and then you can see that the, on the x-axis there is a flow size which starts at one terabyte and approximately ends at one megabyte. So uh, the completion time are uh, completion times are approximately one second at for the largest flows and. 0 0.01 plus seconds for short shorter flows. This is just to show uh, how uh, the results look like in real time. We he ha have here also marking probability and dropping probability for each of the queues. So you can see that the marking probability is significantly higher for the uh, alpha rest queue and uh, for uh, the classic queue, it's quite low. And you can also see the link utilization, which is at uh, 100. It doesn't really change at the moment. Um, can switch back to one of the other AQMs, and then you can see that the <coughs> difference between uh, marking and dropping probability for two types of traffic will become uh, almost the same. Uh, so I think that's um, all for the live demo. This was primarily to show you that uh, it works and we get very low queue and delay. And uh, here we can switch things uh, in real time and uh, see the results immediately. So maybe I can uh, get back to the slides. Uh, so I wasn't going into too much details uh, about uh, how dual by squared is implemented because I think that is going to take a lot of time and uh, I can answer questions later if there are some. And uh, the main thing that I would like to focus on is how to use dual pi squared and how to deploy it. So the first uh, deployment scenario that we target is an internet path, uh, and it's primarily downstream path, and the last, uh, last access router. Another deployment scenario is a data center where, for example, both DCTCP and classic DCTP are used, and they have to coexist until everything is changed. So, for example, if only incremental changes are possible for a while, and there is no single admin that can allow to change everything at the same time. <coughs> and uh, if uh, dual pi squared is used with DCTCP, it has to use the DC-TCP compatibility parameters, which are DC dual Q and DC CM. And uh, if uh, scalable congestion control uses DCT1, then it will just work with default parameters, so nothing has to be changed. And uh, there is more uh, detailed explanation of the parameters in the GitHub repository, uh, which I inserted the link to here. So you can download it from there and you can read uh, the 
readme file which explains what the parameters are used for. But one of the uh, parameters that is possible to experiment with is the target delay for the uh, classic queue, which is set for the target parameter. And uh, to give some examples of how you can actually set it, if you want to use dual pi squared with a scalable congestion control. So one example is uh, TCP prog that uh, you can also download from a GitHub repository and then you can load the module and enable it. And for TCP prog, you can just use dual pi squared with uh, default parameters. And uh, if you want to use it with DC TCP, as I already mentioned, you have to use the um, DC dual queue and DC ACN uh, parameters that will um, use ECT0 as a L4S classifier and not ECT1, which is default. So um, that's actually all I wanted to show. Uh, and uh, I can answer questions if there are any. Yes? I'm sorry? So when you tried FQCODL in your experiment, are uh, you using the CE threshold mode? No, uh, that version I haven't used. I was uh, going to mention if there's question, it's possible to use this version to achieve, uh, to set lower ACN threshold and uh, set lower delay, uh, which would uh, then produce lower delay for scalable traffic. But uh, the version that I used was without that option, mainly because okay. on the test batch. Yeah, because I couldn't really understand why the queuing delay was that big with the FQ cuddle, because it should be like the minimal one with multiple queues. Yeah, so There's it's no possible. There's no way you, do, you can beat uh, FQ. Uh, well, it's possible to, it's fair, to, so. to uh, set this option, and then the queuing delay is going to be lower. But without this option, it's not uh, yeah. that low. Yes. Um, in your uh, what is a demo, right? I see. Uh, you know, you could uh, introduce a little more delay. I mean, yes. did you did you try with the large delay as well? Yes, we did. I can actually. It is still. Yep. Fair. So uh, I'll switch back to to pi square, <coughs> and then I'll set this TCP again on. Uh, the first uh, sender and uh, receiver pair. And so here we have the link speed of 40 megabit per second and the base RDD of, uh, well, we only use base RDD now anyway, it's seven milliseconds, so I can set it, let's say, to 50 milliseconds. Now we have 40 megabit uh, link with 50 milliseconds and the Q and delay is still low. So it's still at um, below one millisecond average and I can actually take a high link speed uh, as well, let's say 120 megabits. Now, when it switches, you will see some hiccups, but that's mostly because we set the QM again. Uh, yeah, I now, see, yeah, I see the, it's uh, even lower. the URL, I mean, the throughput is actually now changing. Like the uh, DC TCP is actually getting more um, you know, throughput than um, the cubics now. Uh, this is not throughput, this is actually window. Uh, if you change oh, okay. the throughput, then you, it's actually going to be. Because yeah, when the delay different. was low, it was the uh, uh, vice versa. And now you're seeing, um, so. So well, when, when the delay was low, I, I actually saw um, the throughput or uh, the window size of uh, DC TCP was actually smaller mm -hmm. uh, in compares, uh, compared to the cubic, but now it's not. It's actually larger, so. So now it's, I switched back to rate. So now you can see the rate of DC TCP is actually a little bit higher, but one thing that uh, on we need to I think it takes a little uh, a while for the classic flows to get completely up to speed. But uh, right now, yeah, they, so the window fairness is rather 
good for uh, low RTAs. It's a little bit different for higher RTAs, but they, it's still within the range of fair uh, comparison, fair window. As you can see the line in the middle, this is the fair window and the, the flows are close to it. Uh, I can also start a few more flows to get a better comparison. And the delay is still low for uh, the alpha traffic. So now that we have a bit more flows, you can see it's uh, getting closer to the middle line. So did that answer your question? Yeah, I just wanted to actually see the behavior, so thank you. Uh, are there any more questions? There are no more questions. Uh, we'll go to the next. Thank you. Thank you.